as I've been kicked back in in the last year and a half, you know, connected back with Gary and going mm -hmm. to regional meetings. And I've this uh, the, I've done eighty-five uh, zoominars in the last four months, which is amazing. <laughs> I know it's well, fun to be blessing. back. It's fun to be back in the game. Yes. And when we get great guys like you, Dave, we can't miss out the opportunity of listening. So, can't well, listen, my friend, you've always been a learning-based guy, but you're the you're the one who needs to be the teacher. You know, you're the you're the mentor of this game because you've played it. You know, I, it's interesting. I'm a student of the game, and I've been around a mega. You know, lots of people, top producers like you, but and so I'm a good teacher of it. But you played it. You played the game. So that's where the greatest respect goes. Yeah. With that, two dollars you can get a cup of coffee. No, no, I think you, I think you get more than two dollars for that. Yeah, I think <laughs> you get, uh, when you, you know, I, it's really interesting because um, as I've been doing a bunch of these seminars, and part of it is is why list with me and that sort of thing. And what I really understand is that agent, most agents don't understand the amount of time it takes to learn this game. They sort of feel that they can just wing it or they can do it personally. And I tell them, no, it's like being a doctor. You know, you've got training, you've got internships there. You have to know the market. You have to know contracts and financing. You've got, there's, there's a ton of things that you need to know and master. Plus then the skills of going and asking for business and negotiating and making great presentations. I mean, it's amazing to me how uh, naive agents are about what it takes to do this business at the high level. Well, the the key is they don't consider it a business. Well, there you go. So it starts with that idea that this is what, and, and it's what's really strange is because it's so obviously a profession at the very least, it's a service oriented profession with a deep base of knowledge and, and, and complexity, right? We are a highly legally controlled business. We, you know, our knowledge of the marketplace, the, to understand a marketplace is complicated. You know, what's, what trends are happening neighborhood by neighborhood? What's causing pricing? All of that sort of thing. It's a, you know, it's a major challenge. So it's always interesting to me. I've been doing a, a seminar, seminar called Magic Comes in Threes. And I said, if you're serious about this to business, your, your, your time divides in threes. One third of it is servicing people. One third of it is lead generation. And one third of it is learning the business and building the skills. You know, I, I talk about... Um, the warrior elite, the training of Navy SEALs, that they spend 18 months of training for every six months they're in the field. And then you look at pro athletes and you look at the hours and hours and hours they spend working on the skills and practicing it compared to the time they spend in a game. Yep. 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 And yet people think they can come into real estate and just wing it. <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. Doesn't work that way. Hi, Patty. Hey, Dave, I didn't want to miss you. Actually, Paul and I were doing a consult, and I said, Dave's on. Let's watch him, and then we'll meet. We'll set up a time to meet. So wait, thanks, wait a sir. minute. What do you mean, let's watch him? You're the, I thought you were introducing me. What is, is Debbie, is Debbie on board, or is, is she just uh, escaped, and she's left this to you without your knowledge, or what's going that on never here? Happens, I, need to, Dave. I don't know what you're I, talking about. Debbie would yeah. never do that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, DZ stands for dizzy. Sometimes hurricanes probably wreaking havoc somewhere in here. So I'm happy to take the ball and run it down the field. All right. Well, and it's my pleasure to introduce you um, as co-author of the millionaire real estate agent, a free enterprise warrior himself. Um, I think this is the third time you're doing the third model yeah, of the MREA with third, us. The third model, right. The third model we did. We did uh, the economic model. Yep. Uh, we did the leverage or the organization organizational. Model. And now we're doing the, uh, the lead gen. Yeah. And this one is so critical. I was, um, I was talking to Paul Gilroy, who hopped on here, because we were supposed to meet at one. And I said, I have a scheduling conflict. We need to go to this, because this is the heart of everything, right? The lead gen model. Absolutely is. No, it if, is. You, if you don't put the time in and perfect your craft, it, it's, it's, it's math. It's not magic, right? Yeah, I know. Well, the things, just, things don't happen. And then you do not have a chance to build a business. I mean, a lot oh. of people get enamored with the idea of the millionaire real estate agent. Oh, I want to go seventh level. Oh, I want to build a team. Oh, I want to build a business. Well, all yeah. those ideas are nice. No, they really are. I mean, I get that. But then people don't dive in and see what it's going to take to do it, right? What does it really take to put this together? Uh, and there's a reason that, that probably only, you know, 
15 or 20% of people who get into real estate really succeed at it. And only one or 2% really go up to what we're talking about today, which is MREA, building, building a business, right? As, as David and I were, David and I, David Norberg and I were talking about earlier, he said, the first thing is people don't really understand that it's a business. And so there's some fundamental uh, ideas that you have to have about what it, you know, what, that it is a business and it takes a discipline to run a business. And uh, here we go. Discipline being the key word, discipline and time over task. Well, yeah, time on the task. That's how you learn the skills. I always say repetition right. is the mother of mastery. Repetition is the mother of skill. I've just, I've done a whole series of seminars on buy list with me and it's about mastering your listing presentation. And if you, if you don't work at learning your scripts and dialogues and mastering your, your presentation, you're not prepared to do mm -hmm. anything. And as Mike Ferry said, you won't have the confidence to go prospect. Right. So you won't even go ask for business because you don't know what you're going to say. So part of it is really, you know, learning that skill part of the game. Yeah. And I thank you for being here, too, Dave Norberg. I've heard wonderful things about you. And thank you for letting our our market center participate in your uh, morning script play and role practice. Um, thank you, Brianna, for bringing that because it's really at the heart of everything. I've heard nothing but wonderful things. So thank you. Well, and David has, David has earned the right to teach that class. He's a wonderful inspirational story about coming out of adversity, which a lot of us need to really understand, you know, that, that there's a certain resilience you build and a mental toughness that's really important. And when you've mm -hmm. come through the valley of the shadow and you can come in and then you can be still, you can keep your optimism and then you can go for bigger things. And David is such a wonderful um, a role model of that lesson. Yes, sir. But now he's in Reno, just leading the life of leisure up there in the, you know, in the high desert. <laughs> uh -oh. So, you ready? Should we, dive in? Should we dive in? Let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited. I'm pumped for this. All right. Well, good. Well, so it's, it's an honor to be here. And Debbie asked me to be part of this uh, MREA series for our team. And I'm glad that the Reno gang could join us also. Uh, because it's, it's, it's our wanting to take our game to a higher level. That's all I could say. And those people that are learning based, when Gary Keller and I were building um, uh, Keller Williams University, and we asked each other, what is it that differentiates the best players from those that don't do as much? And the number one thing is they're learning based. They show up when they have the chance to learn. They show up when they get to learn from masters like David or me or Gary or whomever it is. So what I want to do today in the next 45 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up for questions, is I just want to take a run through what we found when we really put our mind to this idea of what is the, the lead generation model for a, a millionaire real estate agent. Because as we were writing the book and we were meeting with lots of great people like David and others and and masterminding and learning from them and learning what they were doing, and we wanted to capture the best of practice and then take that back out to others. And what we want to say is there's, there's multiple pathways to get to a decent level of production, 20 million, that kind of thing, lots of different ways to get there. But to go higher than that, to get up to the 50, 100 million, to really build a business, then, then it's a different game, right? It's a narrower path and there's some fundamentals that you need to understand. So let me just uh, kind of begin by, hang on one sec. So let me share my screen. Um, so today about powering up with the MREA lead generation um, model. So what we learned in the model was it all begins with your intention. Everything begins with your intention. It's not about where you've been or where you are, but where you intend to go. So we, we just believe so much in the power of intention uh, Tim Woods called it the power of future pull. When you can envision the future you want, and it's not the one you want now, that's where it takes, visioning really isn't about being, you know, telling the future. A visioning is about creating the future, seeing a vision of things that could be that aren't now true. Like you might say, to build an, a, a team where I'm making 300,000 a year, or to build a business, or, that, or to build a business where I can be like Linda McKissick, and I'm out of the business, you know, I, I like to use her as a role model because in a way, it, it's the nature of what this MREA is all about. And it's really wonderful that we connected with Linda right at the beginning and she learned from Gary and I and we learned from each other all along the way. But 
picture this, Linda goes in 1991 from failing out of real estate. She was ready to give up. And then she learned one secret, which we're gonna talk about today. That is that if you go ask for business, you'll get business. Isn't that weird? You went, and she said, you just have to learn to ask and not be attached to the answer because you'll get yeses, but you'll get a lot of no's. And she says, the no's are just on the way to the yeses. So just do that. You're like a professional athlete. You know, you're a major league baseball player. You show up to bat 10 times, you make seven outs. What are you, a failure? No, you're an all-star. You're a multimillionaire and maybe a hall of fame member. Why? Because you got three hits out of 10 times at bat. So she said, a lot of sports have a lot of things where you have short-term things that don't go the way you want in order to get to the big things that go the way you want. And that, and real estate is that game. Real estate is that game. So the, the key is intention. So we begin all this to understand is get clear on your goals and write them down. I will tell you, there's magic in writing down your goals. Now you write them down and you may say, well, that's not exactly my goal and you change it and all that, but written goals drive top production. There's no question that they do. And then of course, you know your reasons, you know why you wanna do that. It's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of courage, but you need to know why you want it. You know, that's another thing Tim Wood told us. He said, you know, the right why kicks the butt of any how. People said, I need to know how to do that. No, you need to know why you want to. You'll find out the how, right? And then, and then there is the how, the action plan. What am I gonna do? That's the five, three, one, right? I know the one thing I want, that's a level of income uh, or, or profitability. And then I have the three things that drive it lead generation, productivity, and serving people and managing my finances. And then what are the five steps under each one? When you have those, then you have an action plan. Now you have some confidence. And then of course, it's when am I gonna do it? And there's the big one. Gary says, Gary Keller says, unless your goals hit your calendar, you're not committed to them. And that's why time blocking is such a big deal. We'll talk about it later. There's really three things we recommend you time block for. Your vacations, your planning time, and then your lead generation. Those are the big three. Because uh, otherwise, those are the things that get put off if you don't plan for them. And though that which you don't plan for doesn't happen. So anyway, you time block. And this is just so, so serious. Now we're going to tell, I'm gonna, we're really going to dive into this because it really was where we went in depth on this. What do you do in the time block? And then you get accountability. And Gary, Gary Keller says this is 80% of success. You have somebody watching you, coaching you, that you've given permission to them to hold you accountable. Gary Keller said at the beginning, he built this whole company on, on coaches and accountability. He had three of them. And one of them was Bain Henyon, who came to him in 1994 and said, Gary, uh, you're trying to do it all yourself. And you can't, you can't build. You're a great inventor. You're a great creative entrepreneur. Your ideas are brilliant, but man, you better get some muscle around you if you're gonna implement this. You better get some, some people who can play at your level of the game. So he hired Mo Anderson. What a powerhouse Moise. And then she looked around to the best person she knew in real estate franchise systems, and that was me. And so the three of us just created this triumvirate that was powerful. But what I, the reason I'm bringing that up is because Gary did that because his coach said to do it. He said, get a great coach, pay them what they charge, and do what they say. That's the key to working with a coach. So. Accountability matters. There's only five questions that you ask in an accountability session. What were you trying to do? How did you do? Um, how do you feel about that? And what are you going to do now? The fifth one is, and what could get in your way? So those five questions are all accountability is, as, as Gary and I say, if you take more than 10 minutes to do an accountability session, you're into therapy. <laughs> you're, into you're into defending why you didn't do what you did and the problems that you're encountering and all that. Well, there's nothing wrong with therapy, nothing wrong with training, learning how to do things and learning how to overcome why you're not doing them. Both of those things are good, but that's not accountability. Accountability is just keeping track of what you're doing. So dollar productive activities. This is the second thing that guys like David Norberg really understand. There are things in your life that matter more than others that you get paid for. Right? It's a matter of what you really get paid for. And the number one and two are lead generation and lead follow-up. So many agents try and delegate the lead follow-up to people that are inept, that are, that are rookies, that don't know what they're doing. They can't convert a lead. They don't have your skills. These two things should be where you spend most of your time, not only generating lead, but when, when there's lead possibilities that you're following up with them because you can always 
what one is you can get them to come in for an appointment, but two is you also will discover what other needs are there and who else they know and you'll get all the information you need to add them to your database. Lead follow-up is one of those underappreciated skills that are in the business. You know, your time should be probably, you know, uh, one third lead, or we say one half lead generation and then one half lead follow-up in, in the lead generation part of this. We'll talk more about that later. And then of course, you get paid for going on listing appointments. So you better master your listing presentation. Page 95 of MREA, magical page, one page in the book, magical. Why? It has a listing presentation right on that page. The 10 things you do for sellers, right there. You could make a photocopy of it, go in and uh, present that to your prospective sellers. And that would be like better than 95% of all listing presentations they've ever seen. Because these are the things you really do to cause a home to sell and to service them. And by the way, at the bottom of that page are the, are the, uh, are the 10 things that you do for sellers, I mean for buyers. So there's also a buyer rep presentation on that page. So your buyer agents ought to be mastering that and be able to quickly tell somebody, let me tell you the 10 things I do that'll get you the right home that's affordable in the right amount of time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. You know, you'll do that for buyers. So, so the thing we need to understand is that presentations for the, for the idea of getting business, that's number three. And then four is, of course, that's when the time is of the essence. It's negotiating deals when they're coming down to a closing. And that you have to, you have to be responsive to that. It's not proactive. You're proactively ready, but you have to be, you have to show up. It's like the center fielder when the ball's hit out there, then they got to run. They might be standing there all game long. And then when the ball gets hit, they better catch it. And that's what negotiating offers is like. And then there's three things that need to be part of our, our, our understanding of how we use our time, but they're not as important as the other four. And that is market research. You cannot do too little market research. I mean, too much. You need to know the market neighborhood by neighborhood, what's going on, be able to do CMAs. Agents try and wing it on CMAs. They shouldn't do that. You should be able to create for your team a Best Buy list. Here We are studying the market every, every day and we have an updated Best Buy list. If you're serious about buying a home, come see us and we can work off our Best Buy list. Oh, just send me your Best Buy list. No, we don't send it. We meet with you and see if you're a serious buyer. So anyway, market research, big deal. And then of course, building your skills. Anything you do that builds your skills. That's why doing script practice with David is a big deal and he's done it all his life. He's, the, he's among the best that there is. And what does he do? He still practices every day. Oh, by the way, so did Kobe Bryant. Oh, by the way, so do great athletes of all kinds. So does Tiger Wood. I mean, all of the great athletes practice their game every day. Why don't we in real estate practice our game every day? I mean, that's really it. Uh, and then there's the working efficiently with buyers. and. That's one of those things that a lot of top agents uh, forget to learn how to do. And that is how to work effectively with buyers. Because uh, there is a way you can do it. I, I, I just wanted to do this as an example to understand. Mike Mendoza, you know, great agent in the history of Keller Williams, our top number one agent for three years in a row. And when we interviewed him for the book, I said, I said, uh, so, uh, you know, how many listings did you take last year? And he did it all. It was all his own personal production, not his team. And he said, uh, 172. And I said, how many sold? He said, 165. I said, whoa, that's good. I said, you probably don't work with buyers anymore, right? He went, oh, of course I work with buyers. They're easy. They're easy money. And also, uh, you know, they're going to list someday. Oh, no, I work with buyers. I said, really? Well, how many buyers did you put into a home last year? 51. I said, you took 172 listings and you put 51 buyers under contract? And he went, yeah. I said, well, phew, that's a lot of work. And he went, are you kidding me? It's not like going to the coal mines. I said, I play golf. I go to all my son's uh, sports events. I have dinner with my family every night. I just lead a focused life. Very interesting, see? But here's what he think. He could work productively. He said that, it, that typically he would take about four to six hours with each buyer from the time he met with them to they were under contract in a home. See, you gotta learn to do that. We got buyer's agents that can't do two a month, which is kind of silly. If you're building a team, a team of high performance people, they should, buyer's agents ought to be doing one a week, four a month, kind of minimum on the team. Why? Because it doesn't take that much time. You're doing the lead generation, your team is. Uh, you're doing all the administrative contract to closing uh, all they have to do is that one third of the business in the middle, which is show people homes, get them under contract and move on. 
but see, they complicate their life and we let them do it because we're not holding them accountable. So that's just kind of a, another side of the, of the building a business is you hold everyone accountable in the business to doing it at a high level. So let's dive into the lead generation thing. The first thing to understand is it's a, a recent trout, call it, call it positioning, the mind share. You are going after mind share. Everyone has in their mind a slot for one or two realtors. You want to be in that slot. If they've got a sister in the business, you want to be in the second slot. So your success in real estate will be in direct proportion to the number of people who, when they think of real estate, think of you. So you want to identify in their mind. In fact, every time you leave somebody, you should say, by the way, when you think of real estate, think of me. I mean, that's just a script that ought to be there all the time. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Good talking with you. By the way, if you think of real estate, think of me. So you just keep planting the idea. Well, your marketing should plant that idea. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, when you think of real estate, you'll want to think of me because I get the job done, right? Because I, uh, anyway, that's a whole thing on listing presentation. But here's the thing to understand. See, sellers, this is this, the, by the way, these numbers have not changed even in the age of all of this supposedly social media marketing and all that stuff. Sellers typically only list with the one agent they meet with, 76%. Another 16% do too. <clears throat> so there you are. You know, you're, you're over 90% of people list with either one or one of, they either talk to one or two agents, mostly one. Now on the buyer side, it's 60% only meet with one agent, the one they meet with, they work with. And some see a couple of them, right? So the thing to understand is the game of real estate is to be the one they meet with, the one they call the one that's in their mind, when they think of real estate, they think of you. And we're gonna talk about some ways you do it. The thing you're, you, the way you do it, remember, we're in a relationship business. Um, people call it a CRM, uh, a customer relations management system, but I call it an RDS. I think your, your database is your RDS, your relationship development system. And I, I think wait, this is a little, it's like the circles. So the circles we had, it's, it, there's the general public you haven't met, then there's the target group of people that you haven't met, but you want to, like in your farm area or in a, in a demographic area. Then there's the people you've met. That's a big deal. And then there's your ad, allied resources and advocates, people who send you referrals. The way I build my circles is I say on the outside, circle zero is people you haven't met. Cir circle one is someone you have sent a contact to, maybe a newsletter or something. Level two is they've tried to, co they've contacted you. They sent you something or made you a call to you. Level three is where you have an interaction going back and forth. That's a critical place. Now you're in the game of getting the listing or getting the sale, right? That's the face-to-face -face meeting. And, and so level three is great. Level four is they're, they, they list with you. They're doing business with you or they're finding a home through you. Level five is they do another piece of business with you. So not just once, but twice. Level six is they sent you a referral. See, that's even more core than doing a second piece of business. They've sent you a referral. And level seven is they've, they've, they've sent you multiple referrals. So in your database, you should be keeping track of, is this person a zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, or a seven? Because you want to get as many sevens. You want to move people in. Now, the, the magic of a database is two things. It's really three. One is it's the repository for great information you have about people. It's not just a mailing list. It's not just a set of addresses and, and email addresses and maybe even their cell phone number. It's content about who they are. Gary, Gary Gentry loves to say to everybody, he said, most agents don't understand that Dave and Gary say it's capture, connect, and, and convert. Capture them into your database, connect with them on a regular basis, and convert them into clients, advocates, and referral sources. He said, here's the key, though. you got to capture it. And so he said, here's what I do. After I meet anybody, anywhere, anytime, if I talk with them for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, if I have an appointment with them, he said, in those little times, I'll learn more about them because I ask great questions and I, and I, and, and, um, I listen and they know and they can feel my sincerity. And so uh, they, they tell me all about them. I know everything about them. But he said, here's the thing. After I leave, 20 minutes later, half of it's gone from my memory. And he said, maybe eight hours later, maybe almost all but 20% of it is gone. And the next day, I might not even remember their name. So here's what I do. He said, after I leave every meeting with anyone, even if it's just meeting and chit-chatting in the grocery store, 
uh, right, or, uh, or someplace else, uh, or, or certainly an appointment, I then immediately put my recorder on my, my uh, phone and I download as fast as I can everything I learned about them. Everything, their name, their, their, where they work, their kids' names, their pets' names, their recreation, anything I learned. And then he said, then I put their name on, this, on the file and I send it to my assistant to put in my database. Now he says, here's the magic. See, this is why a, a database is your business because it's your relationship development system. Because he said, I call them and I call up on the, on the, on the screen all this information I have about them and I can ask them, How, how's your kid doing at Texas A&M? And how did the dog do over at the vets? Yeah, and that little problem you were having with your boss, to you get that straightened out? And, you know, and they know you know them. And he said, the bonding is just easy. Now he said, here's the real magic. He said, after you've called them two or three times or talked to them and you've got the, that information starts to go into your computer. Now you've got it up here. Now you're starting to remember who they are. You'll see them in the supermarket and you're asking them all these questions because you've now got it. So just understand when we say your database is your business, it's not about the technology. It's not about technology. It's about relationships. And so when we say in the book, and we said it 20 years ago, that you, and, 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 you know, Gary with his, with his card file, filing file card system, you know, that that information is your relationship and it's the foundation and it allows you to communicate easily with people and lock that in. So it's the core. I just want to emphasize that. Now, there's lots of ways you can generate lead opportunities. And we would say master three, maybe master three different ways. Some people I've known master open houses, some master farming areas and doing farm newsletters and all that. Um, uh, others uh, call for sale by owners and expireds, and they've got such wonderful scripts in that, you know. I learned from Sherry Puffer, you know, and her talk to for sale by owners, and it's so, it's so backed off and non-pushy, very assertive, but very non-pushy. And she, you know, I would, I would consult with her, and her deal was to make 30 calls a week, 30 new calls, right? And do eight, what she called pop buys, pop buy and see if I can help you sell your home. And out of that would come three listings. So what a, neat, what a neat lifestyle to get three listings a week. And she mastered it. She was so good with those scripts and dialogues of how to talk to for sale by owners and expires. Great lesson there. Now, other people like Jana Cadell, mastered just listed, just sold. She followed the, the, the teachings of um, Mike Ferry. He, here's what he said. He said, list a home, tell the world you listed it. Sell the home, tell the world you sold it go list another home. And that when you do that, when you do just listed, just sold cards, I asked Jana, who she was number one in Northwestern Indiana for like, for like years, even after she left and had, you know, was a regional director and stuff. And so she was seventh level because she wasn't showing up on any of the listing appointments. She was overseeing her team, the Jana Cadell team. And I said, what's the key to your marketing? She said, just listed, just sold. I do it all the time. After every listing, 200, 250 Cards go out right around it. We just listed this home. The Smiths at such and such retained us to handle the sale of their home. If you know someone that wants to move to the uh, neighborhood, call Jana today. And then she said the other thing would be then once it's sold, boom, it went out. And said that, you know, the sale of any other home impacts the value of yours. If you want to know the value of your home uh, or you need to sell it, call Jana. I mean, it was just that simple. Boom, boom, boom. Back and forth. Right. And she said that just that was her consistent, her consistent program. Uh, I know Sharon Ketko in uh, Dallas, Texas. Uh, her whole thing was open houses. She, she had a team and they would hold four to five open houses every Sunday afternoon. And they would pinball people. They would send them from one to the next. They had a little map that showed all the homes they had that, that, were, um, that were open that day. And they made a big marketing event and their website put, pointed people to it. And I know, I mean, we're dealing with things with this COVID and all that stuff and try, but then we have a person like Sue Adler who's doing virtual, virtual. She's doing virtual open houses. Uh, she's saying, I have the virtually virtual home buying process. So she's, she's using a way to market right into the market expectation that sits there now and differentiate herself. So that's the other thing that all, all great agents be good, become good at offering a value proposition that attracts people to want to do business with them. It either leaves a memorable impression on them. Oh, yeah, I want to, I want to, like, like um, Suzanne Forbes Dicker, just was a master with hats. She just, she must have a collection of a thousand hats. 
and they're gorgeous and stylish and she's stylish. But I mean, every time you see her picture, she'd be wearing another amazing hat, right? And she was known as the hat lady, but she had a reputation. She was memorable. And of course she knew real estate. I mean, that was a marketing gimmick in a way, but underneath it was a very intelligent woman who was very good at servicing business. But you can make yourself memorable, find ways to do that. Uh, but that's part of marketing. There's something about people that begin to understand what attracts people. As Linda McKissick said, you need to communicate with people, you, you, you need to communicate the kind of obvious in an emotionally powerful way. And she would do that in her prospecting and her presenting. And eventually it came out in her marketing, like her marketing was our system is your solution. And then she'd have all these testimonials, how people said how easy it was to work with, with uh, her and her team. And, uh, and, and testimonials, of course, are a big deal at, at, at getting uh, you know, that credibility, that reputation. So the point of it is pick for yourself two or three methods for lead generation and then master those. You probably ought to have at least one prospecting and maybe two marketing or maybe two, two prospecting and eventually you get two marketing. But don't try and do it all because you can't. And you have to become a master at what works. Then study other people that have used that method, use those methods, right? I mean, the, the people who go to Mike Ferry are mastering prospecting, direct, just straight prospecting. He's not a big marketing guy, direct prospecting. And they know how to build that. Then once you've prospected and you built your credibility like Linda did, now you can spin that off into marketing. Now you can do just listed, just sold. Now you can do neighborhood newsletters, that sort of thing. Neighbor, I mean, Betsy Sheffy down in uh, Austin, Texas, a master of neighborhood promotions. She did yard sales. She had, the, she had the local calendar. She actually produced a calendar that went once a week into the local newspaper and it had her name on it and you know her key listings on the back, but on the front was a community calendar for the Eanes School District. And she became the place where people would call to promote an event. Uh, can, I, can we get this in, the, in, the, in your next calendar, in the next newsletter? So she became the source of local community information. Amazing. And of course, that it. Then you take someone else like, a, a, like a, a Althea Osborne. Althea Osborne realized that the tech industry was growing in Austin and it would make a big difference. And so she was a sophisticated lady, former MI6 uh, spy, invest, you know, uh, investigator with, uh, with in the, British, uh, the British military. Uh, and so she, she would knock on a door and, and, and uh, she would get the name of the local you know, entrepreneur and she'd say, uh, hi, Jim, my name's Althea Osborne with Keller Williams, and I'd like to apply to be on your recruiting team. And they'd go, what do you mean, Althea, my recruiting team? Well, I know you're trying to get really good people to come here to this area. And so when they come in for an interview, I'll, I'll give them an area tour, show what's great about living here. I'll have them talk to some people that have moved here and just really encourage them of what a great place this is to live. And then if you decide to hire them, I'll even help them find a home. Right, isn't that neat? Her first priority was to serve them in their recruiting effort. Second was, of course, to sell homes. Now, the interesting thing was that not only did they use her to sell homes, they actually used her in their recruiting. They'd call her after a, a candidate left and they'd say, so Althea, uh, what do you think of them? Should we hire them? What did you think of their attitude? What did they say about us? What did they, you know, do they have anything to gripe about or whatever? Interesting. So she really did become part of their recruiting team. Phenomenal. But all I'm saying is she mastered that method. Now, later on, she was just listing multi-million dollar properties. Why? Because they knew her. They had relationship with her. Remember this. Jim Droz said this. People do business with people they know. People do business with people they like. People do business with people they respect. And Jim Droz, who was the number one agent when I first came in the real estate business with Century 21 for three years and that's 7,000 Century 21 offices. He was the number one agent, Santa, Santa Clarita, California. And he was just this little uh, kind of, you know, Appalachian boy from Kentucky who fell in love with a girl from California and got out there and realized his teaching degree wasn't going to qualify him to teach in California. So he said, well, I'll try real estate. And then he, he made that statement. People do business with people they know. So he picked a 600 home area and then he made it his goal in six months to meet all 600 homeowners. He met, I think he met 590 some, but his script was very, I want to just see it's, it's the, it's the idea of coming on with service. 
he would he would knock on their door and he'd say, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, sorry to bother you here at home in your personal time. Uh, my name is Jim Droz with Century 21. And I, I just have one question I'd like to ask, may I? Oh yeah, Jim, what? Uh, my commitment is to make this a great neighborhood to live in. What one thing could I do or cause to be done that would make this neighborhood a better place to live? And they go, well, well, let me think about that. And they give him ideas or they invite him in. And, you know, and so at the end of six months, he actually took 37 listings, even though he wasn't out asking for listings. And then he would communicate with them. Once he met them, he would communicate with them twice a month. So he became a prospecting oriented offering general service and, and getting to know them. And then the follow up was, you know, farm mailers just listed, just sold. He just did that all the time. So the point is, all of us in this game need to master two or three of these methods. Now, here's how our database works. We have the met and the haven't met. The met are the people we've just met, like knocked on their door. Until we knock on their door, but they're in a target farm area, they're a haven't met, right? And so we can move them over. And what we do is we're looking for, um, you know, first when we meet them, we put them in an eight by eight, where we send them something for eight straight weeks, once a week for eight weeks, call it eight by eight. And that's to, to make the relationship concrete, that they really know who we are and they identify us with real estate. So we set up this regular mailing program to them. Then we put them in a 33 touch where we are doing, we're sending something to them, uh, either uh, snail mail or email, or we're making a phone call or celebrating an anniversary or sending them a just listed card, whatever it is. But the goal, the, what we found out was, and this was the research we did in marketing that 33 touches really establishes your relationship and lets no one else get by you. And by the way, it's cost effective because for people you know, it only costs about $100 a sale to use a 33 touch program, right? I mean, the end result will be about per sale, about $99 when you do the math on it. Then there's the 12 direct. Now the, the, the price there is a little more, it's 300, but it's 300 a listing. You, you, didn't, you didn't invest $300 to get a listing for sure, 12 direct, and that's where you go into that farm area once a month, 12 times. Now, by the way, see if you're combining it with just listed, just sold, or you're doing like Jim Droz, one, two mailings a month. He did a one, you know, the following homes have come on the market. If you know someone that wants to move here, call Jim. That was the one, and the other mailer was um, the following homes have sold in your market. Here's the price per square foot that they, on average they sold for, and by, by the way, the sale of any other home impacts the value of yours. If you want to know the value of your home or need to sell it, call Jim. So they're both of them had the call to action, but see, it's the repetition. That's what Jana will tell you. It's the repetition of your name in front of them associated with some aspect of real estate. Don't send out other stuff like recipes and stuff like that. Don't send anything that's not real estate. It should be any mailers you do, should be personal, personal from me and to you. If you can use the personal name they like to be addressed by, use that. So personal to them, from you. Uh, it needs to be local. It needs to feel really local. Like Bob, Bob, this guy I consulted with became the man in the canyon. He was in Stone Canyon, was his target neighborhood. He was the man in the canyon. So, uh, but you know, give some some name, some label to what you, who you are, make it memorable. Uh, so you, uh, you do, so it's local. So it's personal, it's local, and it's real estate related, always real estate related, because we want them to think of you when they think of real estate. So that repetition, I'm just telling you what Gary and I found out was that the greatest marketers do repetition. They do frequency of contact and they out frequency everybody else. See, which is why other people get drowned out. They try and do one mailer, hope it'll work. So, oh, nothing came from that. I won't do it anymore. No, no, it's the consistent repetition over time. Now, here's what we know, that eight by eight and 33 touch will leave 12 to two ratio. And the reason we say 12 to two, this is your Met database, for every 12 people in it, you'll get two deals a year. One deal will be uh, a repeat business, so, something they need. And the other deal will be a referral from them. So for 12 people, now this doesn't happen instantly, but after you've done this three, four, five years, then that's the ratio that comes out, 12 to two. Now on the other where you, they don't know you and you're just doing 12 direct, it's about 50 to one. But even at 50 to one, you know, it's cost effective. That's the other thing that real marketeers understand is that 
It's not that you throw money at it, but you know that money will buy you leads. You know, and I'm not talking about pay and referral fees to Zillow. That's a different deal. We believe that spend 10% of your own income on lead generation and uh, skip the referral business because you'll, you'll make your own referrals, which really gives you then the control of building a business. Because remember this, when and it's kind of a combination of what we talked about last time and what we talked about this team. There's three elements to what makes your business really successful. One is your wisdom and strategy and your, in, your standards and your focus on what matters, right? You care about the business and the quality of your service. That's one. Two is your ability to generate leads for yourself and for other people on your team, right? And, and to know how to convert them. You might even be part of the conversion so that you're actually giving people who are, who are on your team appointments, right? And then the other is the transaction management, everything from listing all the way to a contract to closing. The administrative systems, which as we talked about last time, is the heart of a really good business. Your administrative staff is the heart of your business. It's the stability of your business. It's the customer uh, felt service of your business is that administrative team. So when you can provide leads and the, and the administrative services, then you can attract people, listing specialists or buyer specialists in the middle of that game and you can pay them less, I promise you, because of what you're providing. And they'll still make a lot of take home money, which is, which is your, sales, your sales approach to them. You will make more take home pay working with me on my commission split than you will anywhere else in the real estate business. And I think you say that because you know you generate leads and you know you have administrative services and you know they can be, and they have you as a coach, so they can be more productive here than they can anywhere else in the real estate business. And that's why you don't have to pay a high split. You do not have to, because you're, that's a whole different sale in of itself. But by the way, that's the recruiting sale to a good buyer's agent is you, is my goal is to make, is to have you make more take home pay with less hassle here than anywhere else in the real estate business. Yep. And, and, and Gary Keller said an interesting thing. I'm just going to add it in here. He said, you want people willing to succeed in your economic model. Don't change your economic model to fit other people. You want those who get the wisdom to see that they can succeed through your economic model. So say that you're paying your seller, buyer's agents 35 or 40%. They go, oh, well, I could go down the street and get 50, 60, 70. You go, of course you can. I thought you were interested in your take-home pay, mm -hmm. how much you could spend with your family. I didn't know you were into splits. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll say, I can send you to agents that will probably give you 80%. But here, you're going to, on my split system, you're going to actually have more take-home pay than anywhere else in the business. And the reason that Gary Keller has every right to say that, I want to just get this on the table. He has every right to say you want people willing to succeed on your economic model. Why? Listen to this. In Keller Williams, he went out to prospective franchise owners, and they were going to take all the risk, all the liability. They had to come up with three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 right at the outset before they'd even get a franchise. They had to open a location build it out, technology, hire staff, all that stuff, right? They had to take all the risk. And then when they generated a profit, they had to share nearly half of it back into the profit share system. <laughs> Who would buy into that economic system? The best brokers in the industry. We have the finest owners in Keller Williams of any, and they make more profit than owners of other offices and yet they still give away half of it and they still make more because they understood they could make more money in the Keller Williams economic model than something where maybe they, where they got to keep a higher percent of the income that came in from their agents and they didn't have to do profit share. So Gary has every right to say this. And I'm just saying this to those of you who are starting and really thinking to build a team. The reason you master what we're talking about today, the last two weeks, the last two times we the last two months is that you master you master lead generation and you master leverage, and then, then the economics work out. The economics work out really well because you have something no one else can offer. All right, so the four laws of lead generation, build a database, feed it every day, communicate to it in a systematic way, and then service all the leads that come your way. 
you'll be a millionaire come payday. <laughs> so the poetry continues. But those are the four laws of lead generation right there. Just build a database and feed it every day, five to 10 names every day. We had a thing, it was for brand new agents. Remember when we taught Camp 443? This was before Ignite. We, can't, we taught Camp 443 and Gary and I did a video before every one of the sessions, right? They play with a, a Gary and Dave video about that particular session. Uh, and uh, what we said to them was, here's your daily activity. If you will do this daily activity, you cannot fail in real estate. 10-5-15-5. 10, 5, 15, 5. What is that? Add 10 pe new people to your database. I don't care how you meet them, meet them in the supermarket, call a relative, call a neighbor, call people on the phone, go in the phone book, who cares? Add 10 people to your database that you've met, of course, not just me, that you've met in your database, even if you've met them briefly, right? Add 10 people. Call five people that you already know and remind them you're in real estate and how excited you are and that they should think of real, when they think of real estate, they should think of you, right? 15 was send out 15 thank you notes, nothing more powerful in the world than a thank you note. So they would maybe meet somebody that was waiting on them or another vendor or some other real estate agent or one of the 15 that they've met and they'd send a thank you note. Great to talk with you, it was wonderful. Short, quick, handwritten. Um, and, uh, and then the final five was preview five homes. Know the marketplace right? Preview five homes, do a CMA on five homes. So if you did every day for two years, 10, five, 15, five, you would, you would just, you would, your, your career would be launched, right? If you're brand new in this, if you're listening in on this and you, you're relatively new in the business, remember that 10, five, 15, five. Okay. So what we say is if you can have a millionaire's database, all you need is either about 2000 people in your database uh, Bruce uh, Hardy in uh, Spokane, uh, Washington, when he came to the U.S., he's an Aussie, was a restaurant guy. Uh, he fell in love with an American woman, came here. She, her family was in Spokane. He moved to Spokane as a wonderful, as you, those of you know, Bruce, wonderful Aussie accent. And he realized that he didn't know anybody. And if he was going to succeed in real estate, he needed nobody. And so in five years, he got 4,000 people into his database that he met, knew their names, all that stuff, got their, their information, their, their, at that time, you know, mailing address, phone number, and he could be about 4,000, and that just made his career, you know, gave his career. But we say you can be a millionaire with a database of around 2,000, right? Or I haven't met database of 16. Just pick a farm area, pick an area, and just go at it, 16,000. Uh, names, send out mailers, get, you know, use other sources like your, ask your title company and all that to get people's email addresses or phone numbers. And there you go. Or you can combine it, you know, maybe a thousand people in your met and 800 in your haven't met. Uh, the point is the numbers are there and that's to generate 320 sales. So whatever that adds up to in your market, I think it's probably a million dollars of commission at least or more. So there we go. It's a number, it's this kind of a numbers game, but it's an intentional numbers game. It's a relationship numbers game, and it's a continuing contact message game. Now, here's what we say, focus particularly on seller listings. Focus on a farm area. There's no one has, has ever failed who focused on a farm area in a, fo in a detailed way. Pick one you can afford or handle, 500, 600, 1,000 homes, but know that area because remember, if you take 10 listings and they're spread out all over Las Vegas or Reno, nobody, nobody thinks anything of it. No one knows anything special about you. But if you have 10 listings in a neighborhood, in a development, whoa, you're the go-to person. Everyone says, hey, if you want to sell your home, you better list it with Dave, that kind of thing, right? So pick a fo focus farm area, then just do just listed, just sold, either calls, call people. Hey, I just listed the house at so-and-so. Uh, we're calling you as a service to our sellers. We're calling you specifically to see who you know that would like to move to the area. Oh, by the way, you're welcome to come to our open house as soon as we're doing open houses, right? Or virtual open houses. And or, and, or you send out the cards like, like, um, like Janet did. Just listed, just sold. Powerful way to build yourself as a seller-oriented top agent. Hold open houses or virtual open houses. That shows you have the properties. Become a master of newsletters. They don't have to be long. By the way, short newsletters that are full of information about the local real estate market. 
And Keller Williams generates these things all the time. The neat thing about us in Keller Williams right now is we've got a multi-million dollar operation building our CRM. Command is amazing. It's got marketing materials in there. It's got farming materials. It's got social media materials. You do not have to design or reinvent anything. It's already there. World class. All you got to do is learn how to use it and access it. And of course, fill that database with information about real people, right? It's a relationship development system. Do newsletters about the local area, local market conditions, update people on what's going on, neighborhood by neighborhood. Use the Jim Droves thing, right? Get to know people in a neighborhood, send them something twice a month, once about what's just come on the market, once about what, another one about what's sold. Uh, get into step with the, four, on page 151 of MREA, the 14 step marketing plan. Because when you take a listing, you should get all of the marketing ready before that you put it on. I mean, if you take a listing today, do not put it on the market tomorrow. Get it ready. Make sure it's going to take advantage of that window of opportunity. And you've got all the marketing ready to go. So the marketing goes, then it goes on the market. And of course, that helps it sell better. But more than that, it gets you more leads. Leads for sellers, leads for buyers. Right? So use that 14-step marketing plan or some form of it. It's on page 151. And just remember that every listing you take is a marketing opportunity that signs out in the yard. Uh, it, that is a powerful uh, credibility tool right there. So just focus your marketing effort on seller listings. Now, this is about MR, MREA lead generation, but when we started uh, writing what was going to be the, uh, the second version of MREA, you know, revised, and we really looked and there wasn't anything we'd change. So we started writing what became shift and we only called it shift because the market shifted, but really it was the 12 tactics of top agents. And so this whole section on, on four on find the motivated is cool and read the five myths because all of these are the way we talk to ourselves that get in our way. It's, it's, we say it's difficult. It's not, we say we're too busy. We are too busy because it's, it's the number one dollar productive activity. We don't know what to do or say, great. We can learn it. There's scripts, there's dialogues. You can have training with David. You know, it's all those things. We don't have enough money. Well then good. Just, just go after it with personal energy. That doesn't cost money. And I'm not natural. No one's a natural at it. You have to do things with intention. It's not about whether you're naturally good at it. It's what you've skill built. And the more you build the skill, the more confidence you'll have and the more natural it will feel. The other is understand real estate is a two-part game. We say it right there. A transaction knowledge and service business. That's what we get paid for. And a script dialogue and skill-based business. And that's what draws business to us. There's two M's in lead generation, the method, the message and the method. We need to make sure our message matches the market. Like in, the, in a market that's hot like now, we say, by the way, who you list with matters because the sale of your home will, will matter in the quality of that agent. It's not in this day and age, it's not just to get your home on the market, it's to get you the best price. And listing with me will earn you more money than listing with just anyone. Anyone can get it sold. I get it sold at the highest price. Now, in other markets, it says you better list with me because homes are having trouble selling and you need somebody who can really get that extra marketing measure to get your home sold while other ones aren't. So make sure it matches the market and then make an offer. You know, there's lots of things you can offer. You can offer a report. You can offer a CMA, of course. Uh, you can offer a special consultation. Uh, you can offer um, uh, any, any sort of document you've done about the five things to remember in this market, uh, the five mistakes that most sellers make, all those kind of things. Make an offer that allows them to respond. And then, of course, you got one of two methods, prospecting or marketing. And we say do both. And by the way, time block for this. And this is, gonna, this is the key. This is what people forget. Um, just understand the priority. Dealing with business never takes precedence over finding business. See, because that's what'll happen. We get busy, then we get busy servicing business, then we don't lead generate. That's why you time block for it because you always are lead generating, right? And until your lead generation is done, nothing else should get done. That's why we recommend in the morning, three hours, three hours, uninterrupted lead generation. Don't do anything but lead generation. Time block for it, right? Now, by the way, how you use those three hours, I think most people don't understand that there's really three parts of, of, of lead generation. There's preparing to do it, there's doing it, and then there's the maintaining the follow through after it. So for example, in preparing, 
You're going to prepare your list of people you're going to call. You're going to practice your scripts for what you're going to say. Or if you're knocking on doors, the handouts you're going to have. Or if it's marketing, you're getting your mailing list together. You're getting the idea of what the message is you want to send, right? Or you're putting it on your website. Or you're getting out your, your, um, uh, your social media a thing. All that is preparation. That counts as lead generation. Then there's taking action. There's, you know, in prospecting, there's making the calls, there's knocking on the doors, there's inviting them to, there's calling them for sale by owners and expires. When do you plan on, on interviewing agents for the job of selling your home? And then on the marketing side, it's getting your mailing out, drafting it. I mean, obviously creating it, making it out, make sure it gets delivered and writing your thank you notes. All of that, that's taking action, prospecting, marketing. And then finally, it's maintenance. And that is as a result of the calls you've made or anything you've done, there's going to be stuff to put in your database. There's going to be things you've promised to send people that you'll send out. You want to keep track of what you're doing because you're, you're measuring your performance. So you record what you're doing. You know, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Uh, and then you're scheduling upcoming, upcoming things that you are going to do. So those are the three things and they fill that three hours. And if you set aside three hours for lead generation, you will, find the best things to do with that time. See, but when you let other things interrupt it, then it's easy to get distracted, do that, and you're not doing the lead generation. So that's one of the biggest disciplines is staying true to that three hours. And if you have to break from it for an hour, then you replace it with an hour, you know, some other place in your schedule. So just remember this, lead generation is a contact sport. Right, making people, whether it's prospecting or marketing, the number of contacts you make matters. And then once you make a contact with someone, you add them to your database and you put it in and you stay in touch with them forever. And your number one job is to, is to get yourself in the path of buyers and sellers because not only will it earn you money, which it does, but will, it will enable you to truly turn your real estate practice into a business and take it as big as you want to. And then the final thing, just remember, is it kind of goes back to that first thing. Have a written plan and renewing it as your focus. Time block to do what is important on a focused basis. Take vacations, plan and lead generate. Get accountability from someone else so that you don't go off track and you keep your focus. Make sure your environment supports your lead generation. No interruptions. You get to do what you want and then keep your energy. I mean, always work on your, your vitality, your energy, um, and your health, because that will, drive, that will drive your business. So for me, that's kind of the heart. Those, those things are kind of the heart of MREA lead generation. And Patty will open it up for any questions. If anyone has any questions, please ask them. Powerful. Well, David, you know the game, buddy. So we didn't lead them astray, did we? Hmm. Nope. And you know, you pre you you know, you still practice your scripts and dialogues, don't you? Yep. Yep. I'm a slow learner. It's only been 32 years. I know. I know. Well, the the thing that people need to remember is the more you practice it, the better you get at it. You know, the Navy SEALs don't practice all of the things they do, jumping and diving and all that stuff because they haven't mastered it. No, they've mastered it. They just want to get better. I think the other thing is you become, one of the things you do with your own discipline that's important is you become a role model for those around you. You build a, a culture of high performance, a culture of discipline and a culture of, of, uh, of practice and skill building. So it's what, you know, a lot of people try and, you know, tell others what to do, but they're not doing it themselves. So one of the things that's so important is that you become a role model for discipline lead generation. It's important for your team. All right. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Patty, you still there? Or are you are you uh, bye bye? She may be bye bye. Rihanna, are you there? Yeah. Reno's represented. Yeah, good, good. Thank you so right. much for doing this. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Glad to do it. Thank you for having me here, Brianna. Thank you for bringing your team and keep it rolling, okay?